Today, I'm gonna make one of these. But first, I have to make one of these. Okay, to start making, oh man, gosh dang. To start making the bearded hatchet, I am cutting a billet on the bandsaw. It's about one and three eighths inches of two and a half inch round S7 tool steel. That should make about a one and a quarter pound head. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna start the fork. You know it's hot. Okay, oh, there it is. There's the billet. That's all I need. This is Lou. Okay, so that one was a little raggedy, but the hole is clean, as you can see. First off, I use this drift, a small drift, it doesn't uh, enlarge in the eye at all, it kind of widens it this way instead of this way, lengthwise. So I use this drift and then I go to a larger hatchet drift.
have that isolated, we're gonna draw that out. So, basically, this thing's looking good. All right, I'm gonna have to, uh, actually, I may have to go grind this right here. Just take, just round that out a little bit more. Um, and then possibly fuller it again. Um, but now what I'm gonna focus on doing is getting the, the thickness right there is correct. I wanna thin this out. Um, that thickness is just about correct. Uh, but I do want the edge thinner. As you can see, it's very thick. Okay, so, right now, let's just, uh, wow, this is tough. This area, right there, is too, whoop, too tall. So I'm gonna have to fuller it. Man, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fuller. Right there. Okay.
how's that looking? I just did some touch up grinding right there, just in that area, uh, and flattened off the top here. Not much else to do except keep it clean. Right now, I need to brush every heat and uh, flatten out the sides of the eye towards the bit. Draw the pole. I haven't done that yet. If you'll kindly notice, I have just the pole and the eye in the forge because I do not want to get scale on a bit. The bit needs to stay clean. So if you want clean stuff, isolate your beats. Let me get let me show you what I was talking about with that hourglass. Wow. Okay. See it's where's my thumb? Ow! Gosh dang. Right there. Thin, fat, well, just the fattest, and then slim. Nice and nice and nice. That is my ideal profile right there and yes that's a little bit of a cold shut it's not a crack i know someone's going to ask don't worry about it the bottom is fine as well well the bottom doesn't have anything uh i don't know why that happens the bottom never gets a cold shut but the top kind of does but anyway now i am going to focus on the surface finish really brushing this a whole bunch making sure it's nice and smooth and even the bit is straight yeah it's straight there you go wow that focus stamp it with this my logo usa on the other side s7 and then the serial number on the bottom of the pole
the forge is off. Now it's just nice and peaceful. I have to stamp the uh, serial number, which I believe, I believe it's 14. Okay. Get that. One, four. This is number 14. So, uh, whoever gets 14, uh, got a pretty cool hatchet. I think I know who it's going to, though. Oh, come on now. Oh, kind of slipped. Oh, that's okay. Actually, that works. I, I try to get them lined up so they look like an actual number instead of two numbers. Ooh, focus. There we go. Look at that. There. There's my logo. USA S7. The serial number is on this side. Number 14. Oh, wow. This is... Okay. So now I just need to grind the pole. Grind the... The... Whatever those are called. And maybe touch up this knuckle area with the... Uh, I have a three-quarter inch wheel for my grinder that I clean them up with, but that is pretty much it for forging. Now, I just have to do some touch-ups like I just said. So I did all the radiuses with 36 grit. Now I'm gonna take it to, two, uh, to, to 120 uh, just to make it look nice. They are at 120 now. This thing's ready to go in the sandblaster. It was pretty tough getting any video in uh, of the uh, sandblaster. I could barely see in it, so I didn't bother. Basically, just this thing shoots sand to this thing really fast and takes all the scale off, which I am trying it out. I have never done this before, so I'm doing it on this batch that I'm working on right now. And I am digging the finish. I didn't do it all the way to the edge just because there's no point. I'm going to grind that anyway. Um, 
it puts a kind of an even finish on the on the uh, surface of the axe, which is really nice. Um, I'll I'll be interested to see what that looks like um, once I get them heat treated, because right now I'm working on this batch of four. Um, these should be the rest of the ones for the month. So yeah, next thing I believe is into the kiln for this one and those three. Number 14 going in the kiln. Okay. And that's that, gotta wait for two hours or so. I have that thing go up to 17, 30 degrees, hold it for an hour and then I dunk them, quench them. Lots of fire right there. And then put them back in the temper for two hours. But while that's heat treating, I, I am going to work on the handle. The one that I'm doing is gonna have uh, an ebony handle, uh, Gaboon Ebony. Not sure how you pronounce that. Okie dokie. These hatchets have been in the kiln for about an hour, probably like 43 minutes. So I'll put a glove on so I don't burn myself. And then start dunking these sons of guns. Okay. I try to be quick with the door so it doesn't uh, let too much heat out. That's what she looks like right now. I'll go give it a brush while that's heating up, which that's back to temperature. Okay, let's see which one is it. Okay, this one. Oh wow, it's already cool. So, she's heat treated now. Let me wipe that off. Heat treated. I like the finish, it's nice and clean, still a little oily.